All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your Royal Rumble review for January 28, 2023. One of the best endings ever to a pay-per-view or any show, Raw, SmackDown, whatever. This has probably been the best storyline probably in about 10 to 15 years, probably since the Undertaker, Shawn Michaels storyline, and then those two WrestleMania matches, and then the two years after that feud with the Undertaker and Triple H, that four-year stretch. This has probably been the best storyline since then. Man, what an ending to this fucking pay-per-view. And then we had... But most of the match, I think all the matches disappointed. Nothing really stood out for, like, if I'm going to choose the best match. Worst match. Uh, a tough one. Uh, probably the pitch black match with Bray Wyatt and uh, LA Knight. And just weird. We're going to look like gold in the dark shit in that match. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get to it. First match, the Men's Royal Rumble. I think this is the first time ever it's been the Men's Royal Rumble to start the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. All right, first off, we got Gunther starting at, coming out at number one and Sheamus at number two. They pretty much just taught they, they slapped and chopped the shit out of each other for when they were the first two in there. And then The Miz and Kofi Kingston were the next two in there. Johnny Gargano was number five. He set up the Miz. He or uh, he hooked he hooked uh, the Miz's arms under the top rope. Looked like he was gonna do Sheamus's move, the ten beats of the Baldrum, and then Sheamus said, uh, "Just get out the way. This is my move or whatever." So he did about twenty to thirty beats of the Baldrum, and slapped the shit out of the Miz's chest, and then Sheamus he backed up and he eliminated the Miz with the brogue kick. Xavier Woods was number six, Karrion Cross number seven, and then followed by Chad Gable at number eight, McIntyre at nine. McIntyre eliminated Cross with a Claymore, and then Santos Escobar was number 10, Angelo Dawkins of the Steep Street Profits, number 11. Gunther eliminated Woods, and then Brock Lesnar finally came out at number 12. At this point, this is when I finally started to get excited. Brock Lesnar, like, suplexed the shit out of, like, four or five guys, and then he eliminated uh, Santos, Escobar, Angelo Dawkins, and then Chad Gable. And then this is where I really got excited when uh, Lesnar and Gunther, they had a fucking stare down and shit. So they're going to be teasing a match at WrestleMania, but it looks like they're going to have Les Les uh, Lesnar face Lashley at WrestleMania. And Lashley comes out, number 13, he eliminates Brock. Brock Lesnar just loses his shit outside the ring. He takes apart the top of the announce table, and then he tosses the steps onto on the. He just leaves them on the announce table, and then like security refs and Adam Pearce all come out. Lesnar, this was hilarious. Lesnar, he fucking he he clotheslined one of the refs over the barricade. That was kind of funny, and then he just walked out through the crowd. And then uh, next up, we had Baron Corbin come out. Uh, he took his time to get to the ring. Uh, what was it? So Brock Lesnar. Oh, no. Uh, Brock Lesnar F5 Corbin, and then he left. And then uh, Seth Rollins comes out next. He's, he sees Corbin about to get up, and he set up for the curb stomp. So Seth Rollins does a curb stomp to him. He chucks him in the ring. And I think he eliminated him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he just chucked him out. So Baron Corbin was barely in the match. Oh, this comes out at number 16. And then so Rey Mysterio is supposed to come out at number 17. He doesn't come out. So everybody thinks he got attacked by the Judgment Day or Dominic Mysterio or if it was all of them. I don't know. And then number 18, or then uh, Rollins eliminated Lashley. Dominic Mysterio is number 18. He's got Rey Mysterio's mask, so he's one that probably attacked Rey. It looks like it's going to be Dominic Rey, Ber, Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania. Elias at number 19. And then Drew and Sheamus eliminate Elias. He was like barely in the match. Probably like 10, 20 seconds. Finn Balor at number 20. And then Dominic uh, and uh, Finn Balor eliminate Gargano. So Booker T came in at number 21. He was one of the few surprises in this match. He did the spin rooney and then he got eliminated by Gunther. Barely in the match. 
Damian Priest at number 22, Montez Ford number 23, and then Damian Priest chokeslam Ford outside the ring to eliminate him. And then Edge showed up number 24, another surprise. He eliminated uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. And then, uh, so it looked like Edge was going to toss Dominic out. And then he, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, they stopped it. Uh, Damian Priest uh, pushed uh, Dominic back into the ring. And then Finn Balor is basically the one that eliminated Edge, even though he was already eliminated. And then Austin Theory showed up at number 25. Edge, he started beating up uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor, and like it was like a long fucking rampway and shit. It was like a fucking like a straight, and then it was like a half circle or some shit. And then yeah, so he beat up Damian Priest and Finn Balor, and then out of nowhere, Rhea Ripley comes out. She attacks Edge. She did a spear, I think. And then Beth Phoenix shows up. This is the first time since uh, Rhea did the concerto tour. And. I, when after the Edge Finn Balor match at pay per view was that Clash at the Castle or it was Crown Jewel I can't remember uh yeah so that happened and then Omos at number twenty six Braun Strowman at number twenty seven Braun eliminated Omos Ricochet showed up at number twenty eight. And then uh, Gunther eliminated Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, both of them. Logan Paul, this is the last surprise of this match. Logan Paul showed up at number 29. And then Cody Rhodes, finally back, number 30, after about six, seven months rehabbing his injury. His torn pec. And then uh, Cody Rhodes eliminated Dominic. Braun Strowman powerbomb uh, Cody Rhodes. And then Ricochet and Logan Paul. So one Ricochet got up on one side of the ring. They're like on the apron. And then the, the opposite side, it was Logan Paul. So they both went in. Uh, they springboarded off the top ropes. And then they collided like in midair. Shit, it was fucking nuts. And then that pretty much just like destroyed each other. They were down for a bit. And then uh, Cody Rhodes eliminated Braun Strowman. Austin Theory eliminated Ricochet. And then... Rollins curb stomps Theory, and Cody Rhodes eventually eliminated Austin Theory. And then Logan Paul, this was a shock. Uh, Logan Paul eliminated Seth Rollins. So it looks like Logan Paul and Seth Rollins are going to feud at WrestleMania. Or they're going to have a match, and so they're going to build up a feud to WrestleMania. And then uh, Cody Rhodes eliminated Logan Paul. And then Cody Rhodes, and then uh, Cody Rhodes and Gunther, the last two, they fought for uh, about five to ten minutes before the last elimination. Cody did the Shattered Dreams, nod to his brother Goldust, he pretty much kicked him in the balls. If you guys don't know what that, you guys don't know what uh, move that is. And then uh, Cody elim eventually eliminates Gunther, so Cody Rhodes is gonna challenge most likely Roman Reigns at WrestleMania for the undisputed title. Should be a good build-up for that. Especially with all the stuff that the bloodline, but they got to sort all that shit out first before they start up this feud. Uh, next up, we got um, uh, LA Knight versus Bray Wyatt in a pitch black match. This was like glow-in-the-dark shit. The, the top uh, screen above the ring, that was like lit up. Around the like where the fans are sitting, the uh, barricade that was lit up, and then right in the middle of the ring, uh, the Mountain Dew logo was lit up. And then yeah, so the match starts. Uh, La Knight tosses Bray Wyatt into the steps, and then La Knight jumped into the air or jumped into Bray and put him through a table. Uh, the announce table, and then uh, LA Knight hit him with a kendo stick. Bray Wyatt hit the sister Abigail for the win, and then uh, Bray Wyatt, so he chases uh, LA Knight around after the match. Uh, LA Knight hits him and with a kendo stick, and Bray is no-selling him, and he's still chasing him, and eventually they get to a part of the, of a, of the stage somewhere in the crowd, and then the angle they showed, you couldn't see who the hell was up there, but it's probably Uncle Howdy, but it wasn't a clear shot. So 
you just see some random person just jump through the lights or whatever, and then the, there's like explosions and shit. There was fire or whatever to like destroy LA Knight, and then in the replay they show like those three fucking uh, those three fucking characters or whatever from the Funhouse and shit. They showed in the replay they didn't push him, so Uncle Howdy jumped himself or some shit. So yeah, that was it for that. And then yeah, so flames popped up after Uncle Howdy jumped on the LA Knight. And uh, next up, we got Alexa Bliss versus Bianca Belair. Alexa Bliss hit a drop kick. And uh, Bianca suplex Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss countered Bianca's moonsault. And then uh, Bianca went for the moonsault again. This time she got it. It was for a two count. Alexa Bliss hit a DDT. And then Bianca hit the KOD for a three count. Next up, we got the women's Royal Rumble match. 30 women Royal Rumble match. Rhea Ripley was number one. And then Liv Morgan and Dana Brooke were the next two in. Emma was number four. Jaina Baszler was number five. Bailey at six. B-Fab at number seven. She was like barely in the match. I think Bailey eliminated her. Oh, no, it was Rhea Ripley that eliminated uh, B-Fab. Roxanne Perez from NXT was number eight. Dakota Kai, number nine. Followed by EO Sky. And then all three members of Damage Control eliminated Dana Brooke. Dakota Kai eliminated Emma, and then Io Sky eliminated Roxanne Perez. Natalia, another uh, one of the surprises. He's back from a broken nose injury. He's at number 11. Candice LeRae entered at number 12. And then Damage Control eliminated Shayna Baszler and Natalia. Zoe Stark from NXT at number 13. Zia Lee entered at number 14. And then. So they uh damage control eliminated Candice LeRae. And then uh Becky Lynch uh got in number 15. This is where it kind of got exciting. She went after all three members of damage control. They were like brawling outside the ring and shit. But eventually damage control got the upper hand. Tegan Knox entered at number 16. Asuka at number 17. I haven't seen her for a while. Her for a while. She had like a new character. I forgot what the character's name was. I think, uh, I think Michael Cole or Corey, one of them said it, Corey Graves. Uh, Oscar eliminated Tegan Knox, Piper Nivian. She used to be Dewdrop or whatever, so she changed her name. She's number eight. She entered at number 18. Tamina entered at 19. Chelsea Green at 20. Rhea Ripley eliminated Chelsea Green. Becky Lynch eliminated Dakota Kai and EO Sky. And then Bailey eliminated Becky. Liv Morgan eliminated Bailey after that. And then uh, Zelina Vega entered at number 21. She was like promoting Street Fighter, the new Street Fighter game. She was like dressed up as one of the characters, I guess, or some shit. And then, uh, yeah, so Zelina Vega eliminated Zia Lee. Raquel Rodriguez entered at number 22. Mishin entered at number 23. And Lacey Evans at 24. Michelle McCool, so Michelle McCool enters the ring. The whole pay per view, she's watching the, she's watching the match like with the crowd. She bought a ticket or whatever. She's sitting with her daughters. Undertaker wasn't there, sitting with her, and then so they're behind the announce table pretty much the whole night. And then she enters the rumble at twenty five, and she just takes off her hoodie or whatever she was wearing. And she enters the the uh, rumble through the crowd, right there first, the second row wherever they were sitting at, and then. Uh, so Michelle McCool eliminated Tamina. Next up uh, in the Rumble was Indy Hartwell from NXT at 26. Sonya Deville at 27. And then Sonya eliminated Joey Stark. Uh, Lacey Evans uh, eliminated Zelina. Shotzi was number 28. She brought her tank out there. And then she ran all the way that fucking long ass ramp to the ring. He left the tank there. And then uh, Sonya eliminated Indy Hartwell. Nikki Cross eliminated, or uh, she showed up at number 29. Zaya Jax, Nia Jax was number 30, surprise entrant. Uh, so everyone, she, Nia Jax gets in the ring. She starts talking shit with all the, 
with all the competitors that are left in the ring. So they all form a circle around her and they beat the shit out of uh, Nia Jax and everybody eliminates her. Raquel Rodriguez eliminated Michelle McCool. Oscar eliminated Sonya Deville. Rhea eliminated Michelle McCool. Or oh, I can't remember what it twice. It was Raquel or Rhea Ripley. I can't remember. One of them eliminated Michelle McCool. Mishin eliminated Shotzi, and then Raquel eliminated Piper Niven. Rhea Ripley eliminated Raquel, and then Liv Morgan eliminated Nick Frost. Rhea Ripley eliminated Asuka and Liv Morgan, and then so that was the last two in the match. She eliminated Rhea Ripley, eliminated Liv Morgan for the win. So she's going to most likely face Bianca Belair in one of the big uh, matches at WrestleMania. All right, next up, we got Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens for the undisputed title in the main event. Uh, he was accompanied, Roman was accompanied by Paul Heyman and the honorary youth, Sami Zayn. KO hit a cannonball in the corner and he swung Roman into the barricade. KO landed a clothesline back in the ring. Uh, Roman hit a Uranagi for a two count and Roman hit the drive by for a near fall. KO hit a frog splash off the apron, and then he hit another frog splash, this time in the ring, for a two count. Roman Reigns landed a power bomb for a near fall, and then KO hit a German suplex. And then uh, Roman hit a Superman punch for a two count. Kevin Owens hit a swanton for a near fall, and then Roman hit a spear for a two count. KO went for the stunner, and then Roman pushes KO into the ref, so the ref goes flying outside the ring. KO goes up for a pop-up powerbomb. He he hooks uh, Roman's legs for the pin. And then I think he got to a five count or six count before he said, before he let go of Roman. Because Kevin Owens uh, was looking at the ref or whatever, trying to see where he is. And then he Kevin Owens turns back around and Roman Reigns fucking low blows him. And then Roman tells Sammy to get to the, to get him a chair. Sammy just told Roman, you told me to do nothing. And then he eventually gets a chair. He looks near the announce table. They're not there. Heyman says, hey, look under the ring. And there's a chair here. He didn't initially give it to Roman, but he eventually did. But he hesitated. And then uh, KO hit the stunner for a two count. As soon as Roman turned around to hit him with the chair. And then Roman hit the Superman punch for a near fall. And then near the barricade, uh, Sammy tells Kevin Owens to stay down. And then Roman Reigns got out the ring on the other side and he did like a running start. And then he ran into, or he hit a spear on Kevin Owens through the barricade. Pretty much broke the barricade. And then Roman threw KO headfirst into the steps. Skull, like the back of his skull hit the fucking steps twice. Shit looked nasty. And then uh, Roman Reigns speared Kevin Owens for the win. And then we had the best part after the match. You know, chaos on the screen there. Um, Usos and Solo Sokoa show up. And then Jay Uso, he has uh, the pieces, you see, those red pieces you guys see in the ring there. It was like a Hawaiian uh, late, uh, Hawaiian lease, Hawaiian lace, L E I S, how do you say it? So Jey Uso went to put that on Sami Zayn. And then Roman says, hold up, you ain't doing that yet. He's got to do something first. And then Uso's hit a 3D on KO. They put a chair around KO's neck with him in the corner. Solo hit KO. Uh, yeah, so Solo did the Umaga's move where he hits him with his ass or whatever while he's sitting in the corner with the chair, with the chair around his neck. And then Roman pulls out some handcuffs, and then he handcuffs uh, Kevin Owens to the ropes. Or uh, he hands it to the Usos, and the Usos handcuff Kevin Owens to the ropes. Usos super kick him, I don't know, like 50, 100 times. Fucking destroy this guy's head. With super kicks. And then, so Roman's about to hit uh, Sami Zayn with the chair. Sami Zayn gets in the he gets in the middle of it. He says, "This is beneath you. You don't have to do this." And then uh, eventually, Roman he he wants to he wants uh, Sami Zayn to do it. So he hands him the chair. He just leaves it off hanging off his fingers. And then Sami grabs the chair. Took a while. They built this up. 
Then Sammy hit Roman Reigns in the back with a chair. The crowd just went ape shit. It went nuts. And then uh, Jimmy Uso super kicked Sami Zayn. Uh, the whole time while this is happening, Jay Uso is standing in the corner. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. He eventually leaves. He I gave this Roman like this pissed off look, and he left. And then they showed him like uh, near the where the wrestlers go to the back in the gorilla position. He's like crying or some shit. This shit was insane. And then uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, he just grabs Sammy Zayn and he's like, you killed my family, Oose. And he just punched the shit out of him. And then, yeah, that was it. This was fucking great storytelling. Best storyline in a while. This is going to be crazy. A lot of questions. Is this the end of the bloodline? What the hell's going to happen with Jey Uso? Looks like Sammy Zayn now. He's with Kevin Owens. What's going to happen with these guys in the elimination build up to Elimination Chamber? So, yeah, a lot of good shit here after the main event. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a solid rumble, Matt. Uh, solid rumble pay-per-view, especially this this segment after the main event say, pretty much saved it. it was a lot of a lot of dull moments during the rumble matches was typical because it's just rumble matches are fucking long, so there's going to eventually be boring shit during the rumble matches. And then but most of the matches, all the matches disappointed, feels like. Nothing really stood out match-wise. So, yeah, the solid show. For the first pay per view of the year. So, yeah, that was pretty much it for the Rumble. All right. Uh, see you guys.